We frequently discuss exercising our arms or abs. But what about developing our brain muscles? Your brain, after all, serves as a command center for everything else you do and serves as the location of all your creativity, problem-solving skills, and interpersonal relationships. Fortunately, there are numerous methods to look after our brains and maintain them healthy for the rest of our lives. Therefore, if you want some sage advice on how to maintain your sharpness, watch this video all the way through. I promise you, you'll be glad you did. We will learn about mind-blowing secrets to boost your brain power in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Many of us are unaware that we feel good because of a neurotransmitter called dopamine that is released in the brain. Dopamine levels must be balanced for the health of your body and your brain. Dopamine facilitates communication between nerve cells. It is created by a cluster of nerve cells in the center of the brain and communicates with other regions of the brain. You can experience pleasure, happiness, and motivation thanks to dopamine. Dopamine levels in the brain spike when you feel good about what you've accomplished. However, you're likely to begin to yearn for more of this dopamine reward, which is brought on by a variety of pleasurable experiences, such as indulging in delectable cuisine, engaging in sex, succeeding at a game, and obtaining wealth. Dopamine surges are also caused by alcohol and many illegal drugs, which is one of the reasons why people become addicted to them. And so you can tell yourself the effort part is the good part. I know it's painful. I know this doesn't feel good, but I'm focused on this. I'm going to start to access the reward. When we focus only on the trophy, only on the grade, only on the win as the reward, you undermine that entire process. The ability to access this pleasure from effort aspect of our dopaminergic circuitry is without question the most powerful aspect of dopamine and our biology of dopamine. And the beautiful thing is it's accessible to all of us. I'll provide you with an example using data and experimentation. In a well-known experiment conducted at Stanford many years ago, young children in kindergarten and nursery school drew images because they enjoyed doing so. The researchers started rewarding the drawing skills of the young children who enjoyed drawing. Usually, a gold star or any other pleasing gift for the kids served as the reward. Later on, they ceased rewarding them with the gold star. They discovered that the kids had a significantly lesser interest in drawing on their own. Now, keep in mind, before obtaining a reward, these kids chose to engage in a drawing activity because they intuitively enjoyed it. Nobody instructed them to draw. This has to do with the debate over intrinsic versus extrinsic reinforcement. Even if we give ourselves rewards for something, or we obtain rewards, we tend to associate those benefits with our ability to carry out the activity, making the activity itself less favorable without a reward attached. If you get a peak in dopamine from a reward, it's going to lower your baseline, and the cognitive interpretation is that you didn't really do the activity because you enjoyed the activity, you did it for the reward. Dopamine levels peak when we complete tasks or have enjoyable experiences, yet everyone has a steady baseline level. The dopamine level will then drop below the baseline and take some time, often two days, to increase to the baseline level. So this is what people usually mean when they talk about postpartum depression. Not just mothers who have just given birth experience this. This is something that runners also go through, say, after winning a marathon. Additionally, the magnitude of your peak affects how far dopamine will go below your baseline. Normally, people don't seek out these massive dopamine boosts that result in significant dopamine declines. Some do, and this is what is referred to as addiction. After the high, you go through a terrible bottom, which misleads people into seeking another high. The disparity between the peaks and baselines narrows as this is repeated often. This explains why addicts often claim they need to use drugs again. Dopamine has all these incredible properties of increasing the amount of energy in our body and in our mind, our ability to focus. By maintaining a balanced diet that contains foods high in L-tyrosine, a protein required for the production of dopamine, you can naturally raise your levels of dopamine. Almonds, avocados, bananas, meat, chicken and eggs are a few of these. Supplements containing omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, magnesium, and turmeric 
are also said to raise dopamine levels. Dopamine will also rise during enjoyable activities. Exercise, meditation, getting a massage, and getting enough sleep are a few of them. It might also be beneficial to reflect on your successes and all the positive aspects of your life. Eating chocolate is one technique to raise dopamine levels. Dopamine levels may rise by 150%, 1.5x as a result of this, but the effects are short-lived and disappear within minutes or even seconds. The act or pursuit of sex raises dopamine levels by 200%, two times. Dopamine levels are increased by 250%, 2.5 times when nicotine is present, especially when it is smoked. However, this impact is relatively transient. Similar to nicotine, cocaine will raise dopamine levels. Dopamine levels will rise by a stunning 1,000% 10 times when methamphetamine is consumed. The remainder is not intended to enhance dopamine, which would be a component of a healthy lifestyle, except for sex and chocolate, assuming one does not overindulge in either. What alternative healthier options exist? Cold exposure up to 250%, 2.5 times, can be significantly increased by exposure to cold, such as taking a cold shower or submerging yourself in cold water. Up to three or four hours after exposure to cold, the effect is frequently still there. Wim Hof, often known as the Iceman, is particularly well recognized for this form of therapy, which is not new. Exercise. Dopamine is increased by exercise, but strangely, the amount of dopamine increase is influenced by how much you enjoy the exercise. A tool can be added to make exercise more pleasurable, such as music or podcasts, or a pre-workout beverage with caffeine. Caffeine One that is fascinating is caffeine. Although it very slightly raises dopamine levels, it does raise the number of dopamine receptors. You can thus enjoy more of dopamine's benefits. It matters where the caffeine comes from. While an energy drink can provide it, this is not the best option. It is much preferable to get your caffeine from coffee, tea, or yerba mate, especially yerba mate, which may have some dopamine neuroprotective qualities, according to some research. The reward at the end should not be the whole center of your attention, just as you shouldn't focus on the stimuli that are provided before the effort and add more and more types of support. We begin to view effort, hard labor, and enduring discomfort as the reward itself when dopamine becomes completely potent. Although it is difficult, our bodies have the neurocircuitry necessary to make this happen. Intermittent fasting. Another natural method to increase dopamine is intermittent fasting. However, the fasting process itself, not the moment you can start eating again, should be the main source of dopamine release. These are resources that you may use to support this. This mostly focuses on comprehending the physiological and the neurological advantages of fasting. Once more, the process itself becomes the prize. The process will become increasingly delightful as a result, and while the reward will still be enjoyable, it will take a back seat. Social interaction. Dopamine is released chemically in response to healthy social interactions that cause oxytocin to be released. Therefore, it is crucial to make sure we put effort and time into fostering these positive social encounters and connections. Dopamine is essential to human existence. Our dopamine levels are not where we need them to be. Since it appears to be a direct correlation between low dopamine levels and Parkinson's disease, we are especially concerned about the long-term repercussions of dopamine suppression. But just to highlight the things that can interfere with and prevent you from getting dopamine release from effort itself don't spike dopamine prior to engaging in effort and don't spike dopamine after engaging in effort learn to spike your dopamine from effort itself if you enjoyed this video and want to keep boosting your performance check out this next video that explains how physiological signs can help you relieve anxiety and sleep better